Okay, I'm reloaded. Big Dappuccino here. This is Oz and Ann's number 37, if I'm correct. Uh, we're going to take a closer look at the premium uh, die-cast vehicles that were featured in show and tail number 113. So, without further ado, let's get into it. <clears throat> First, we got the uh, the Matchbox Super Fast. This is the 2020 version of the Porsche 911 Turbo, the 1980. They done this before, and this is excuse me, I had to scratch my nose. I mean, to be rude, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. Anytime you do a video, your nose start itching. You have a itch somewhere. Just nervous energy, I guess. And this is the set. I have most of this stuff put up. I don't even think it's on display here at this time. But um, this is the latest one that I was able to find. And I have an older, let me put this on display. Yeah, this is the 2020 version. The door is open on this. They open easier than the old one. Kind of stiff. It's always going to be one where the doors are so stiff. Feel like you're gonna break it. Now that one open with this one. Now I think that's both of them. There it is. And as you can see, it orange with that. I think is that an off white or a tan? Well, it's gray. Looks grayish silver to me with gold trim around that orange number two on it. And I think those are, I think it's gold ones. I don't think it's orange. Orange and the gold is so close in color. It's like a lighter. The interior, I think, looks kind of good for what it is. I have an older, uh, Matchbox 1980 Turbo Super This is from uh, let me move this one over. This is from 19, I mean, I'm going to say 19, from 2019. Here's the box right here. This is from the 50th anniversary. This is when I started seeing them again. I didn't see these in my local stores until that 50th anniversary. Then they started popping up again, at least every so often, at least once a year. I will at least see one series. Well, 2020 has only been a year rip, basically. I haven't seen the 2021. Even though I heard it's other series. The blue one is on the other side. And I don't think the steering wheel is is well defined. Defined as the uh the, the one from 2020. The interior looks kind of blockish. This one the interior looks better. Maybe it does because it's black. But um as you can see, full headlight, tail light deco. It's a good addition. It just shows what Matchbox can do when uh, they put their best foot forward. I mean, it's a classic looking one. I mean, as far as Porsches, it's kind of, I ain't going to say it's a, it's kind of a step above. What uh, even Hot Wheels has done, except for the RLC versions, 
where um, the doors open. I think it's only one or maybe two. I know one is a very rare one that has the Rockwell Porsche, the um, the black one. It's supposed to have Stella, Stella Atoshes on it. Stella Atoshes or Atoshes. Whatever beer he drinks, I forgot. Whatever beer the founder of Rockwell uh, B. Griff drinks. And it's got a figure of him up there. But that's it for the Porsche, man. I think I did enough. If you get a chance and you see it, man, pick it up, man. It's a cool addition to any collection. Let me put this one back. Next, we're going to get into... I just put that up to save some space. Next, we're going to get into this Hot Wheels uh, 85 Ford Bronco. Some of y'all might have this one. It was kind of looser for me from the uh, Wild Terrain series. I had these cars. I think I had the Mercedes Unibog and the Land Rover Defender. I think I had those early. I think I found a Camaro somewhere else. I think I found the Unabog and the Defender at um, Walmart. And I think I found Camaro at Target, if I remember right. Or, and the Porsche. No, I might have found three of them together. I think the Camaro was the one I found last. I think I found the Porsche, the Mercedes, and the Land Rover together at Walmart. And the Bronco I just recently found. And <clears throat> got a police livery on it. I don't think it's a licensed livery, it's just generic. But that black and white is, you know, of course. That just spells out police. It doesn't have a light bar on it. That's the only thing that's missing. Why you go through all that trouble and you don't put a light bar on here? You could have moved that 85 back over here and put the light bar on top. Other than that, it, it looks good, man. It definitely fit into any police scenario that you decide to, you know, to have for display. Full decos, tail lights, everything. That's enough for that. Next, we're going to go with the uh, green light ad car. And this bad boy, it doesn't have an uh, opening hood. It's dusty already. And this is the... Uh, 84 GMC Sierra 2500 uh, from the uh, green light vintage ad car series. It's supposed to be a diesel. I didn't know that. And this series right here, I'll show it. It's another car I have in this series. But you're going to see the 71 Dodge Charger Super B that I picked up. But I had the 81 Chevrolet K5 Blazer. I, I think I had that got that months ago. As you can see. And in fact, this is not that same Blazer. This is a 91, but it's still... I think the same body style or similar. 
No opening features. <clears throat> so that's a whole different one. Yeah, that's 81 Blazer. This is a 91, according to them. Let me check them again. I can swear this was a... That's what it says. It's a 91. Ah, I thought it was this series, but I guess it's another series. As you can see, it's similar. They're both square bodies that everybody's going crazy over. I was very excited to get this blazer. No, the hood doesn't open, in case you're asking. Just this feature. Which kind of idiotic to me. I don't think people were actually doing that, but I guess, I don't know why they did that. I guess for tooling reasons or This is a nice looking truck though. It's kind of basic. Interior looks good. Stock wheels. You see all the trim and everything. The window detail on the rear. Tail light details. The bumpers and everything look nice. No side mirrors of course. They really do that. And the grill and everything, the headlights look good. Painted detail. About the same with the blazer. And all uh, this grill looks so mean, boy. Man. If I had to have this. This has more of a um, aftermarket look. So this might have been an auction car, I think. I don't, I'm not sure. But I think that's enough time for that. And this was a, a 2020 series. But of course, we know what we've been going through this year. Now, it's been behind, and Hobby Lobby is usually behind anyway. I hate to say it. That's why I'll I be excited when Target or uh, Walmart stocks uh, Green Light or Johnny Lightning or Auto World because their inventory is usually newer. <clears throat> But lately, both of my locations have been lacking. Next, we're going to do the 71 Dodge Charger Super B, which is another vintage ad car, like I said, in that same series. This one does not have opening hood detail. I've tried, even though it is clean. I guess this is more stock. look for this car you know it does have white leather tires good years and to contrast i have a dodge charger that i had for a while i can't even remember when i got this one It's saying that I think this is a 20, I think this came out in 2016, if I'm correct. No, 2018. So I got this, it's 2018, but I think I got this in 2019. And it was part of a, um, the racist edge, I think. I think it was a STP 
um thing. STP um related, I guess symbol was on it. STP series for green light. And this one has the opening hood detail. Which I wish the block was that well, that's the air clean. I wish it was orange. Or I wish it was blue or uh, or the um uh, or the heads was blue. Give it a kind of contrast, but it's a nice one to have. And 71 Charger gets slept on a lot. So it's good to have different versions. Everybody likes the 68 or the 69 or the 71 or, or the 70. 70 is, is, is popular, of course, because of Fast and the Furious. 68 is popular because of Bullet. 69 because of... Yeah, 69 is correct. You know, Dukes of Hazard. But, um, this is pretty cool call to have. This one has good years, but it has yellow leather tires with white, white wheels, which looks real cool <clears throat> last but not least we got a uh, mini GT which I know some of y'all probably already had this one on your I've seen it on a channel or something but um, I was able to get one for a reasonable price and it is a Miho exclusive. They never, I never see their uh, copyright detail, but it says 2020 Chevrolet Corvette. Copyright 2020. Plus, it's got a cool box. Uh, of course, no opening details usually on Mini GT. I wish the rear open. Man, it has stock wheels and tail lights are done. I don't know if those are inserted. Look like it. I think the headlights is inserted too. And you can see the little engine. Well, supposed to be engine detail back there, but we can't see it because it's kind of um, got it to defrost the thing and stuff up there. But uh, yeah, you see all the angles. Uh, it just so happened in that same uh, show and tell 113, I had a 2020 Corvette C8 that I had found at Dollar Tree. So we're going to contrast that and see how good Matchbox did. Which is like comparing apples and oranges, but oh well. One is premium, one is mainline. One is dusty already. What's that one? Right. The blue one. Matchbox did a good job for what they usually are working with. You can see the, the engine detail more here, which is a good, a, di a good detail. They, they did a good job scale wise too. Scale wise, it looks, it looks pretty close. You know, the, the Matchbox one looks a little more meaty. And Mini GT is supposed to be real 164 scale, so. I ain't noticed this had matte rally stripes on the Mini GT. And you can just see all the detail. 
for my main line. This is a real good call. It's a shame that, um, like I've said in the past, Matchbox is the second banana and Mattel diecast. Of course, the Hot Wheels. Of course, the only reason why Mattel acquired them was to take out the competition and control the competition. And pretty much they thought they would have a monopoly on die-cast cars, I guess, in the entry-level market. Because Johnny Lightning and I think a couple others, I don't think Greenlight was around yet. It might have been. It might have been just starting. If I remember right, Greenlight was started by people who left Johnny Lightning to... And started going like if I'm correct, if I remember my history. And the same thing happened with, um, I want to say the same thing happened with M2. M2, originally, I think the designers, some of the designers from Johnny Lightning left. I think in, I want to say the early 2000s. And they left and they formed uh, M2. <clears throat> But that's pretty much it, man. Uh, this is show and tell. I mean, not show and tell, but these are the cars from show and tell 113. This is awesome. And it's number 37. Like I always say, this is not the best diecast channel. It's not the worst either. want to thank the subscribers for all your support, your views, your likes. They really mean something to me. For the random viewers, I encourage you to subscribe. Uh, hit the notification button so you can have all the access to the content. I do different kinds of content. Uh, the model here is show a little love for the diecast. want to wish everybody peace and blessings until the next video. Big Dappuccino signing out. This has been Oz and Ends, number 37.